<laughs> hey folks, welcome back. My name's Alan Parks. And I'm Mark Larson. And we are the, the Smart Fellers. Well, somebody's impressed. <laughs> I'm not. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, today we're going to talk about specializing in a musical style. Um, with the Smart Fellers, we are what you would nominally nominally call a swing band, really. Vintage swing. Originally, we were. Vintage swing, kind of. Old styles of swing, not yeah. your modern stuff, especially. Um, and not big band. No. So, not with a duo. <laughs> no, especially not with a duo. Especially not with a duo. Um, but we work as a five-piece sometimes. Yeah, still not a big band. Yeah. Anyway, so um, one of the things is, is Mark and I are both interested in other styles of music other than swing music. Um, there's different kinds of swing music, but, you know, Western swing we do a bit of as well. And... You know, but we're also interested in other kinds of music like, um, well, rock and roll. Rock and roll, blues, blues. jazz, like more modern. Like straight ahead jazz. Yeah. Um, uh, funk. Latin styles. Funk and soul. R&B. Um, you know, I play a lot of classical music. So, show music, show tunes. Yeah. Um, a little bit of everything except no rap, no hip hop. No. We don't really do no, that. No, we're old white guys. We're not playing rap or hip hop. No. Um, so reggae, we don't really do any reggae. No, but I love reggae. I, I know you don't like it. Well, no, it's not that I don't like it. I don't get it. Don't I can't get it. play it. I just I know. I haven't dug into it's it. It's a whole nother thing. It's a whole nother thing. Exactly yeah. right. But not for the guitar player. <laughs> cheek, cheek. <laughs> See, the yeah. bass is a little bit different. The bass than that. and the drums yeah, are totally different. Yeah, exactly. So um, the thing is, is every so often we want to mix in some of these other styles into what we're doing now. But is that appropriate? And that's the question we're sort of addressing addressing today. Yeah. I mean, we have done that a bit, but yeah. we've we've taken like modern rock tunes and smart fellerized them. Exactly. So they're not really what they were originally. They're no, well, they're the smart fellers version of it. Yeah. Well, we do <laughs> wish you were wish we, wish uh, you yeah were wish here. you were here by Pink Floyd, but we do it as like a two beat country tune. <laughs> you know. So. Uh, so we're smart fellerizing those things. And that's all well and good. And they go over well with audiences. Mm -hmm. But should we, for instance, play Wish You Were Here closer to a cover of the original album version? No. 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 You know, probably not. So is specializing in those kind of music, um, you know, those different musics, is it going to satisfy you as a musician? You know, to be in a band that only plays... A certain kind of thing. I mean, mm, well, yes and no. It depends on what you're trying to get out of it. If 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 you if you're trying to be like successful, you know, I'm really gonna take this far, you know. Yeah. Then you probably want to narrow in and just pick a genre, right? And just really focus on that and be in one band. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. And, and that's yeah. that's how that's how most people get successful. Is they're doing one thing, you know. Right. Uh, but if that's not what you want out of it, I don't see why not. You know, why why can't you play whatever you want? And but there's another question: is is it going to hold the audience's interest? Exactly. If they show up to see somebody who's going to be playing vintage swing, and we end up playing <clears throat> tunes by ACDC, are they just going to go away? You know, I mean, yeah, I mean, no. in a rock style, not in a right. swing style. Yeah. Are they going to go away? Probably. Say if if you put down the upright bass and pick up an electric bass, yeah. and I put on a, you know, you know straight a up electric call guitar instead of a, you know, yeah. <laughs> jazz box. Yeah. Then things are going to all of a sudden. It's a different thing. It's a different band all of a sudden, really. Yeah. But then, you know, or say you stay on the same instruments. Right? So you stay on your acoustic guitar and I stay on my upright bass, but we play the songs like I stick to the original bass part or you stick to the original guitar part. Yeah. Is it going to be good enough to keep the audience interested? Right. That's a question. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. well, and, and also on top of that, should you be playing originals? Should you be playing covers? 
That's another conundrum. <laughs> That's another part of the If you're going to be thing. doing originals, you better be just doing that. I think so, too. Well, maybe, uh, you know, like a cover or two, but you're going to yeah. have to change them to that style. But you're, you're going to do your own version of it. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And you might even slightly change the style, you know, or something sure. like that. But, sure, change the arrangement a little bit. Yeah. And um, But originals is a whole different thing. That's a whole other animal. Yeah. Which we don't, we have a few originals. We have a couple. Some but not much. It's mostly covers. But not covers as in it sounds like the original artists or as close as we can get it. Covers in so far as somebody else wrote them. Right. Exactly. So um, so I would think that success has different definitions for those two different kinds of things. Success for an originals band, to me, would be you know, a record deal or getting on some TV or film music or, um, you know, playing uh, Coachella Festival or something yeah. like that. Or touring. And, and touring. On, yeah, exactly. Selling albums. Yeah. Whereas for a cover band, what would be a measure of success for a cover well, band? Well, nobody wants to buy your album, for one. <laughs> yeah, because they already have the original. <laughs> yeah. um, unless you're doing them so radically different. But even still, that tends to be more of a novelty right. than anything else. My mm-hmm. attitude with albums... Um, for cover groups, like for the bands that you and I have been in mostly, um, and this one in particular, is I think of albums as more of a souvenir. If you go to see a band live, you like what they do, you want to take home a souvenir. Yeah, and also help support the band. Yeah. Because you're probably seeing them in a restaurant or a bar or right. wine garden or something like that. So, mm-hmm. um, so you probably don't want to go uh, to a producer in a in a uh, professional studio to make that album. A record you you want to make that in your garage. Yeah, which is easy <laughs> enough now. You know, it's it's certainly do, more doable than it ever has been in the past. Exactly. Um, but that's as far as you really have to go. I mean, if you want to spend some bread on a, on a studio, go to a studio. Why not? If you have the money. Yeah, they've got the good gear. So, um, but success measured for a cover group what would be a successful cover group? What would you, I mean, what level well, of success would you think? Yeah, there's a lot of these tribute bands, you know. And sure, they playing, play for big crowds. They're playing big festivals all over the place. Right, you know? yeah, big corporate events, but such then, as they are. Nate, but then days. there you are, you're playing those same songs, that same style over and over and over mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. every gig. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is that satisfying to you? It is to some people. Sure. Otherwise, they wouldn't be doing it. Yeah. I I'm mean, sure they're getting paid good. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. Well, I mean, and also, you know, another level of success for some people, weekend warrior type players, mm-hmm. would be, you know, the hottest venue in town, you yeah. know, which might be, you know, a little dive bar. Depends on the town. Sure. Like, in, in my town, there's only one bar. <laughs> So is, is being successful here going to be <laughs> no playing that bar? <laughs> no, I've done that. <laughs> yeah, that's not success. That was a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but yeah. I mean, if you lived in, say, you know, Oakland or San Francisco, then there's probably a lot more of that. Right. For in in case you don't know, we're on the West Coast. We're in the North San Francisco Bay Area. Um, you know, so we're not getting to play out in New York City very often. We don't play in the city hardly ever. San Francisco. The city. The city. The. <laughs> Our the city. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you, so levels of success would be different for different kinds of bands. Even for what style of music would have different levels of success. For instance, a rockabilly band, okay, that plays covers, a level of success would be to play that big festival, Viva Las Vegas, in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. It's a big music festival. It's a lot of rockabilly bands. They go into the wee hours of the morning. Go to Las Vegas. Um, So that would be a level of success for a rockabilly band. Yeah. Okay? Even playing covers, if you're playing Bill Haley stuff or anything else like that, that's still successful. Mm -hmm. It's just... but I mean, but that doesn't come where any close to playing Madison Square Garden. No. Like a very successful original band would. But you can't see any cover band playing No, but Madison you could Square open Garden. for Brian Setzer. Right, exactly. And that would be a different level of success as well. Um, so, 
Should you specialize? Let's get back to that. Should you specialize and how far can you go? Now, I've always been of, of the opinion that probably depending on the exact style, that if you play whatever songs you play, if you've got a certain instrumentation, then it's going to sound like that kind of music. For instance, we play in a band called the Mike High Gents, and it's um, Hawaiian music. It's uh, kind of the... Hapahali. Right, which is kind of Tin Pan Alley um, Hawaiian music, not traditional native Hawaiian music, especially. Some of the tunes are. Tin Pan Alley with a Hawaiian punch. Yeah, that's right. So the instrumentation is Mark on guitar, acoustic guitar, me on upright bass. We've got a lap steel guitar player, and we've got a ukulele player who also does most of the vocals. With that instrumentation, I'm of the opinion that you could play an ACDC tune, and it's still going to sound like a Hawaiian tune <laughs> if you've got a ukulele and a lap steel player. <laughs> yeah, So pretty much. So you can stray from the genre and make it sound right, but you certainly couldn't make a whole night of that, I don't think. Mm. Well, you probably no. could, but are you going to keep an audience? No, but it's nice to throw something like that in the mix. Yes. With I'd, your regular material. With the regular material, that is a lot more, you know, down the pipeline of, of yeah. what you're doing. And it's fun when, you know, things start to get heated up over the night, you know. And then yeah, you get something the, you don't expect. You throw that at them and they're like, hey. Oh, okay. Yeah, but... Whenever we do something like that, for instance, in the Smart Fellers, we don't get more demands for that kind of music. It's like, oh, that was fun. Now back to what you were doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. So um, so should you specialize? I guess to wrap up, should you specialize? Yes, to a point. It just comes down to what you want out of it. And what your audience is responding to. Your level to. of success. You know, how far do you want to go with it? If, 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 if you don't want a lot of success, just do whatever you feel like. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but is your audience, if your audience responds to your choices, yeah, then keep going. Do, a, keep doing a that. gauge. Yeah, yeah, it's a really good gauge. Mm -hmm. um, friend of mine uh, is from Melbourne, Australia, who he says... That's how you develop your repertoire and how, how you know your songs are, are working or not working because they were playing for um, playing in basically beer halls yeah. for the punters. The punters. The punters. That's what they call the audience. These yeah. are mostly beer drinking roughnecks. And they respond to certain songs and don't respond to other songs. Well, it's like keep doing the ones they respond to, get rid of the stuff that nobody's doing, which I suppose everybody does to a point if you're paying attention. you got to pay attention to that. Right. So, should you specialize? Kind of, yeah. Kind of. But not always. <laughs> you can have fun with it. Yeah. So, that's our advice. Oh, definitely have fun. <laughs> definitely have fun with it. <laughs> and aim at what your level of success is. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want to sell out Madison Square Garden, you probably should be writing songs. Yeah. And getting a record deal and a producer and management and all of the hangers on and roadies and groupies and all that fun stuff. Yeah, record deals. Yeah, that's it's whole, kind of a different thing. That's now. a whole nother yeah. subject. Boy, if the, you're the playing industry really has changed over the years. <laughs> but if you're playing in a cover band, what's that level of success of success? Are you gonna be playing for big corporate events? Are you gonna be playing on the street at downtown Disney, which is a pretty high level of mm -hmm. success. But you know, are you, are you going to have name recognition and selling tickets in venues? Or are you going to be playing the hottest night spot in your town? Is that your level of success? Are you happy playing for beer and food? You can certainly get those gigs. They're out there. They're out there. There are a lot of them out there. So I would say specialize as much as you can. Don't be afraid to step out the out of the boundaries. Of it a little bit. Yeah. See if it works. And then aim at your level of success. What do you think? I think it's over. I think that... <laughs> Go turn that off. <laughs> so... Welcome to professional showbiz. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, but anything to add to that? Your phone hasn't stopped. <laughs> Is it off now? <laughs> no, it's not making any sound now. 
Okay, good. <laughs> so, anything to add to that? I don't think so. It don't seems like so. we've covered... Yeah, yeah. Get out there and see what works. Have fun. Yeah, it's supposed to be Have fun. Have fun. If you're not having fun, do something else. Yeah. You're doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> don't do it wrong. <laughs> hey, anyway, so that concludes uh, this one, I think. So, make sure you hit like and subscribe and... Isn't there a notification bell that they need to hit? Yes, yes. Hit, hit that for yeah, us, hit would the you? Bell, yeah. And we can let you know. Yeah, when when more rambling discussions are going to happen. <laughs> hey, you never know what's going to happen next. Yeah, I know. And <laughs> neither do we. <laughs> more is the pity. <laughs> anyway, thanks for joining us once again. My name's Alan Parks, and I'm Mark Larson, and we, we are the Smart Fellers. Bye. <laughs> Your alarm went off. I know. <laughs>